Hi guys, Chris at the Ultimate Recycler. Let's talk about copper. Copper is the most precious of the non-precious metals. It's a term that gets most uh, scrappers and and dumpster divers and uh, street scrappers quite excited because it's good returns in copper. It's um, it's kind of the holy grail as far as average scrapping goes, and it comes in many many different forms, as we can see here. So I thought I'd make this video as a follow-up to one I did quite a while back on brass and just to help out beginner scrappers um, just show the different styles you can get the different types how to identify it and um, what to be wary of how to sell it there's lots of different grades and as large as that copper order cylinder even much bigger sometimes and uh, certainly if you find a haul of copper in a dumpster you're on the money. So stay tuned. We'll go through these one at a time and try to identify where the best value is and uh, perhaps give you a bit of an idea as to how much work to put into some of it to get your return. Before we get into the types, let's just look at what copper actually is. Well, it's a, a pinkish metal, hence the term copper coloured because you know the colour once you see it. Uh, it can buff up to a really nice gloss in fact that would polish a lot more if you wanted to it's a very soft metal and it's extremely conductive and that's why it's used for a lot of electricity applications and it's malleable it's easy to shape which is why it's used for plumbing and it doesn't doesn't readily corrode so it's great for water applications and it's extremely soft now if you file copper and I like to use the edge of a file because usually the teeth on the file, the cutting parts, are still in good order. It's very soft. You can really feel the file bite into it. And you can almost hear it. Now, I mentioned this when I was doing the brass video. The technique with a file, here's a piece of aluminium, which is also very soft. The technique with a file is an important skill to get used to because you can actually... You could pass a blind test on picking copper or aluminium from, say, brass or stainless steel or normal steel. Because of the softness, you can really feel the, the file bite into it. So, copper and aluminium are much the same in their softness, so that would a blind test would be pretty hard to pick them. But, luckily, they're different colours. So you can always pick aluminium because it's a nice silver colour, whereas copper... No matter what the plating is, once you get through it, you'll get that nice pink copper. So get used to feeling the hardness of a metal with a file. It's a handy skill to have. The other really obvious thing with copper, uh, obvious for most of us, but maybe not for beginners, it's not magnetic. So always a good idea to pass a magnet over metals you're trying to identify, just in case it's actually copper-plated steel. Sort out the ferrous objects first, and then you know that if it looks copper coloured and it's not magnetic, it is likely to be copper. Not necessarily, and I'll show you an example soon, but it's the first test. A magnet is always really your first test. Okay, we'll start with wire, because copper wire is probably one of the most common forms of copper. And again, it comes in many grades. Uh, some people like to strip the insulated wire to get the best value. Other people don't see the the that the time's worthwhile and of course it does depend on the wire you've got but it depends what you want to do with the copper as well because if you're just looking to sell it to the scrapyard you do really want to take your time into consideration if you have a use for copper and perhaps you like to melt it down and make make copper bars or castings out of it then you might want to save it probably and go to the trouble of acquiring it probably more than the average scrapper would so all right, let's go through copper wire, and the best value is the absolutely pure stripped copper wire, uh, known generally as bare bright. Uh, also, it's referred to sometimes as bright and shiny or Milbury copper. It can pay, I think at the moment the prices are pretty good, it can get up around $8 a kilo for that. So a small bucket of it can actually add up to quite a lot of money. Uh, the next step down is this, which looks much the same. And if most of you, if you haven't had the experience of copper, you might say, what's the difference between these two? Well, this is lacquered copper. 
it's come out of transformers it's come out of electric motors that's out of the yoke of a back of a TV um, it looks like clean pure copper but it is coated with a lacquer because it needs to insulate and if I'll just explain that for a tick so that you understand when you have copper wire that carries electricity it doesn't need to insulate from each other the strands can all touch in fact the more strands twisted together the better conductivity you have of electricity when you have something like a transformer coil or an electric motor or any of other type of coils that induce a magnetic field it would be absolutely pointless if all these copper wires connected to each other because the whole system relies on electricity going round and round and round and round and creating a magnetic field so the wire itself cannot short between strands it needs to be insulated so they usually just lacquer it and it's often a clear lacquer they can come in various colors you can even see green but because of the lacquer it will be downgraded and you won't get top price for it so this bare bright is really the pick of it and it's it's um certainly worth separating it's not a huge price drop down to this but if you do include some of this lacquered copper wire in with your bare bright the scrap yards will downgrade it all to the lower price and if you are doing melting um, have a furnace or a doing some castings that's the best because you have so much less impurities in your in your pour uh, some other versions we have this which is copper wire but it's tinned so again it's coated it's not an insulation between the strands but it's just a way probably of keeping the copper corrosion free in certain situations so that goes pretty well with your lacquered copper pretty well goes as number two i think they would call that number two copper the other exception is when you have very fine wire like hair wire even though it may be absolutely bare bright and stripped it's still because it's so fine they do lose a fair bit of copper in the smelting process i believe and that needs to go with your number two as well likewise any that may have been bare bright but ends up with a bit of corrosion um, you can see this got this verdigris corrosion here which is very typical of copper and if you put that in with your bare bright clearly it's not bright it is bare but it's not bright so that would go with your number two copper as well uh, as I said, there's not a huge price difference, and there's quite a lot of copper in that, so that actually equals a fair bit of value. But you do need to be careful on separating if you want to get top dollar for your really good stuff. Now, with insulated copper wire, um, you've got a number of options. The lower grade, the really thin wires, um, things like uh, Christmas tree lights, things with plugs still on, uh, antenna coaxial type cable really low return copper don't chop the plugs off leave it all as it is and send it off and the scrapyard will buy it as low grade copper wire uh, although I think that can be a confusing term some people some yards will call it attachment wire but it's the lowest grade of copper wire because of the low recovery percentage of copper so that's easy any thin wire or stuff you couldn't be bothered chopping the plugs off throw that in a bin separately anything a bit better like power cords um, wiring looms that are a thicker type wire chop the plugs off and you'll get a much better price um, here's some cords that have come off a computer I could easily just lock both those plugs off and throw the wire in here and we call that here mid-grade wire but again it depends on your yard but that's paying around about two to two dollars fifty a kilo it depends on the current price of copper whereas the attachment wire is much much lower so it's worth your while on the thicker, thicker wire to separate that and take the plugs off it any wire thicker again uh, is probably worth stripping to get out your nice bare bright it's really a matter of how much you value your time and how much you want the copper and everyone makes those own judgments for themselves just before we finish up with the copper wire aspect let's look at some of the sources of copper that some people like to pull down further now we have here some transformers uh, this is a big old chunky transformer out of uh, power supply i think a very early one 
it's um it's good copper and I did file a little bit here you might be able to pick it up in the video it's nice and soft and it has a nice pink look to it so that coil would possibly be worth getting out now you can sell transformers and electric motors and coils they pretty much depending on the scrapyard they could all go in the one bucket uh, also the ballast set of fluoro lighting um, and recently it has been paying pretty well uh, and scrapyards will buy these things complete and I think they were paying up to about 70 cents a kilo for transformers and electric motors you need to check with your scrapyard of course but I think it's a good way of selling the stuff unless you've got plenty of time now you could do tests on all these things as to how long it takes you to pull apart to how much copper you get out of it something like this one's probably worthwhile because sometimes you can just crack these with a hammer or grind the welds and they fall apart uh, some of them you can actually take apart with bolts but then the laminations can stick together and be all sorts of problems to get out so you do have to be aware of your time some of these coils actually um, pull the copper off really easy and i'm actually going to do a little time trial on some of those coils soon the ones that are mounted or wound around a, a, a ferrite type material which is quite brittle you can actually sometimes just give these a thump with a hammer and you pretty much have all the copper separate in a in a few seconds so it's up to yourself how far you want to go if you are saving the copper for uh, melting purposes of your own well then yes you probably go to a bit more trouble uh, for me i pretty well much like like to sell things as they are because i'm relatively time poor uh, things like these ballasts I, I don't think are worth trying to pull apart at all they're such an enclosed unit and some of these earlier ones actually had uh, a compound which i believe is carcinogenic so i really think you're best leaving them totally alone small motors and small coils probably not worth the effort unless you've got a lot of time these ones as i said do spin apart really easily and those ones will so it's up to the individual remembering that all this copper wire is going to be the lacquered one so you're not going to get a bare bright bare bright price for it the other thing to consider and like i mentioned with brass the world is full of trickery have a look where i fold this one this is out of a, mo a modern microwave and that's actually aluminium and the transformer itself yeah, it's fairly heavy but it's probably not quite as heavy as i'd expect you know this one's really heavy so a file again is a handy tool and there are cases more and more where they're using aluminium wire or i guess they're saving costs and i think eventually that will reflect in the price of transformers and electric motors at the scrapyard uh, they certainly would be aware that a lot of transformers are now becoming uh, being used with aluminium wire uh, and if you went to pull that apart without checking first hoping to get some copper you're really wasting your money because there's wasting your time because there's there's very little value in aluminium in that and then you're just left with a pile of shred steel so i'm in favor of selling them as transformers as electric motors complete uh, as i said i'm rather time poor uh, and i don't think it's worth stockpiling them because i think the fact that they are using aluminium wire more and more i think eventually that will reflect on the price that the scrap companies offer for transformers uh, you're not deceiving them by sending down this one now because they they quote a transformer price and undoubtedly it is a transformer so they're allowing for it already but i think we're better off not stockpiling transformers and electric motors for too long because eventually there won't be much copper in them at all now let's look at some other forms of copper um, we have plumbing copper copper pipe some little bits here we have a bus bar um, big heavy copper bars we used in electrical uh, switchboards and that sort of stuff they're all nice solid pure copper and i say pure in that there's no contaminations like solder or paint or they're not plated with anything so they'll all go as number one copper now it's really only wire that goes under the bare bright because it's so pure the rest of the copper as long as it's clean and there's no contaminations will go as number one this one has a brass fitting on the end so definitely we you would cut that off they could go on your brass bin if that happened to be a soldered piece you would then either put the whole lot in number two 
or chop it off. Put that in, piece in number two, and the rest in number one. It's pretty easy on copper pipe. It's very soft. It's easy to cut with a hacksaw. You can actually bend it back and forward um, by putting one end in a vise, and it breaks really easily. So make sure you get all those little bits off, and you'll get best value. Now this piece in, in particular, I actually cut this sleeving off it. Uh, easy to do, and we get nice number one copper out of it. Whereas if we had to let the sleeving on, it would have gone as number two. Uh, the other thing to watch for is paint. Here's an old piece of copper pipe that's been painted. So that has to go as number two because it's contaminated. Along those lines, this piece as well, it's not only got some corrosion, but it will be soldered around that join. So number two. And this piece is really badly corroded with the verdigris. So number two copper there as well. So you can, if the rest of it's really clean, you can cut that off. Uh, most scrapyards are reasonably forgiving, um, especially if you have a good relationship with them. So a little bit of tarnish is okay, but it really needs to look like copper. That's probably a bit far gone. This also has a soldered piece on the end, so definitely number two. A bit of copper sheet here with some typical copper corrosion. Um, that would go as number two as well. Now I could polish it up and get number one. But there's not a big difference in price. Now, there's other coatings on the copper as well that you find. This one's in a large electrical uh, terminal, and they usually have a hole in them. This is actually tinned copper. And I see I fold a little bit there, really easy to see the pink on it. So that will go as number two. This piece looks a bit similar. It's actually nickel plated. And again, number two copper. And this is an old Burko uh, boiling jug, which is chromed. So it's all copper. You would need to get any metal steel fittings off it. But that is all copper other than the chrome casing or plating. So that would go as number two. And you often find plumbing fittings that are also chromed. So as long as they're clean copper, without huge big fittings of, of other metals, then they're fine to go as number two. A bit of solder is okay. And a bit of corrosion is okay. Uh, this piece here would go as number two as well. Even though it has got a couple of, well, one brass fitting there. I could chop that off and put it in a brass bin. It's probably not really worthwhile. I think I'd still get number two for it. If you don't recognise it, it's actually a water heater out of an old wood stove. And it's very, very thick copper. There you go. It looks like it suited an IXL stove. So... It would weigh really well. In fact, we'll put that on the scales and just see. So there we go. It's not far short of three kilos. And uh, number two copper, I don't know, at the moment, be a bit over six dollars a kilo, maybe. Uh, look, the price is going to fluctuate depending on where you watch this and when you watch this. So um, it's, let's say three at six dollars, it's eighteen dollars. So you can see how copper can add up pretty quickly in value. You'll need to make sure that this pipe isn't brass. But I do know it's copper. Um, now, what else have we got? Other contaminations. You can find radiators. Now, this is a small heater radiator out of an older car. The main radiators on older cars were much the same. And they have a copper core, but they have brass tanks. Where's my file? Here it is. So, we can file across the tank there. And really obvious yellow of the brass. And the cores will actually be copper. They're usually quite soft. So most scrapyards will offer a price for copper brass radiators. Just make sure you get any steel brackets off them or any plastic fittings. And you'll get a pretty good price for the radiator complete. It's um, really not worth your time mucking around separating the brass from the copper. Now this one is an air conditioner radiator. It's a copper aluminium radiator. Now, I have seen guys that cut down through here and get the copper pipes out of. Generally, these copper pipes have to go as number two anyway, even if they look clean because of, they've had compressor oil through them. Um, I find I get a really good price for those copper aluminium radiators as they are. And again, you have to chop any steel brackets off, use your magnet, check all the metal, and you'll get a good price as they are. They actually stack really well, and it's nice. You get a good paying load if you take a load of them down to the scrapyard. Likewise, large copper water cylinders, um, they will go as number two copper. Oh, I used to know it as domestic copper. I'm not sure some scrapyards might still use that term. 
You can lop the brass fittings off with the grinder if you want, but I find that most scrapyards will take a copper cylinder. As long as any metal, other metals and the heating elements are all taken out of it, as long as it's all copper with just a couple of brass fittings, that will go as it is. And they can weigh fairly well. The older ones were really thick walled. This one's reasonably thin, but the older ones can be worth a hundred or more dollars just for one cylinder. So always worth stacking them up, they're good. Okay, so just a quick word on trickery now. Um, there are some things that look like copper or they're copper plated or the corrosion looks like copper and they're not magnetic. So here's where your file's handy. This pipe here, if that was in with a bucket of other copper pipes, I'm sure it would be easily overlooked and thrown in with your copper bin. But a quick file, and I have did it just before, shows that it's clearly brass. It's a real yellow tinge to that. Now some of the brass can take on a pinkish tinge, depends on the percentage of copper, because you've got to remember that brass is actually an alloy of copper. So, and that's why the prices of brass seem to be linked to the price of copper. If copper goes up, then brass does too. But that is a brass pipe. Now, this door handle. In the 70s, they had a lot of copper uh, plated stuff. Now, the door handle isn't magnetic. I checked it before and I filed a little bit carefully. And if we can see that, it's actually copper plated brass. So, always check that the copper isn't just a plating and as I said numerous times a quick file it's very soft and you'll see the pinkish metal underneath now this one's copper plated as well it even shows evidence of that green verdigris corrosion uh, and then it has other type of corrosion now this one is actually a die cast or a cast zinc uh, and they often use this for souvenirs and stuff and then copper plated them so uh, again, you cannot put that in your copper bin, even as number two. It actually could go in your um, die cast or cast zinc bucket. But then again, we could sell that and I'd get $5 for it in the shop. Much more than scrap metal price. Now, the last thing I want to mention with copper is that you often find them as ornaments as well. I just grabbed this out of my shop. It's a vintage, probably 1960s or 70s large copper wall plate it is all copper although there's a little hanger there that's probably steel sometimes they have a steel ring around the outside to give them strength but the point with this is that it doesn't weigh very much and with all scrapping you need to consider what you can sell it for otherwise so let's just weigh this plate it's only just over half a kilo so if we got number two copper for that you might you'd get number one actually as long as you made sure the steel ring was out of the back of it um, that's still only going to be about three dollars i've got that in the shop for 20. so even at a garage sale you're going to get five or ten so always consider selling something first rather than scrapping it don't get those sort of copper starry eyes and throw it in your scrap bin thinking beauty another one to the pile because you might be doing yourself out of money this is a really early uh, you'd probably call it a jam pot uh, I reckon that it'd be even late 1800s now it's been through about five world wars by the looks of it and it has got holes in it but that doesn't matter um, for the amount of copper in that and we're not going to get an accurate weight because there's a steel handle on it but just under two kilos that would probably only go for you know about five to six dollars for copper less because we'd have to take the handle off it Whereas I'd get 20 for that as a nice rustic pod in the shop. So always consider other options before you scrap. But um, there you go. I think I've been through it all. Feel free to ask any questions below. If you know something about copper that I've forgotten to mention, or that I indeed may not even know, uh, drop it in the comments underneath. We're all keen to learn, and quite often you can learn more from the comments of a video than what you actually learn in the video. Okay, thanks for watching. Look out for me in the next video. I'll do one of these on aluminium soon, and I'll also touch on stainless steel. See you then. Bye.